surprise, surprise, more chemicals in our food. Uh, if you're not following the Environmental Working Group, you should. I'll make sure I put a link in the info here for you. But they just put out a, an article, and this actually came from the journal Toxicology, uh, that shows that there's this chemical in our food. Now, I've not heard of this. So this was new to me, which is why you should follow EWG because you'll, you'll get some insight to things that you may not even know about at this point. Um, we've all heard of glyphosate, which is Roundup, and glyphosate is a well-known chemical. It's living in the soil. We cannot get rid of it. People actually have glyphosate poisoning. You can test your body for glyphosate or Roundup, and, but yet it's still no big deal to go to a, a big box store, buy it, and then spray it all over your, 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 the um, cracks in the sidewalk and try to kill everything around your house. So you know, you're still exposing yourself drastically to this chemical, not just in the foods you eat, but directly use of, direct use of it. So this particular chemical is called, I have to read it, because like, I wasn't sure. It says um, maternal chlormaquat, is the name of the chemical, chlormaquat chloride. Exposure disrupts embryonic growth and produces postnatal adverse effects. So I'm gonna tell you about what this chlormaquat is and then we'll get back to that title in, the, in this journal from toxicology. Is this chlormaquat is a chemical that is, has been approved to use on ornamental plants here in the US. It's not approved in our food supply. However, it's approved in other countries. So we get our imports of grains and, it, and other foods, and this is showing up, the residue of chlormaquat is showing up in the residue from the imports. Well, the EPA decided that there was an acceptable, allowable amount of chlormaquat to be in our food supply from these imported goods. And then in 2018, they actually increased the amount that um, of chlormaquat that could show up. So they, so you know, they were like, oh yeah, okay, well this much is showing up, but we're going to increase the amount that can show up. Which means that you know, don't you think that if they had to increase the amount instead of decreasing it and saying, listen, you got to do something better for your crops, they increased the amount because more of it was showing up? Hmm, question mark there. So this. Chlormaquat, what it is, is they spray it on the plants so that, or on, let's, let's use oats because th there was 14 oat-based products that got tested for cl chlormaquat. I'm having a hard time pronouncing that. And, uh, and so what happens is they spray it on the plants. And so let's just say, you know, the oats are growing and they might start to wilt over. Chlormaquat actually is a, it's a growth, um, mm, it's not an inhibitor. I think it does inhibit some growth, but what it does is it forces the plant to be upright. So then now what happens is it's easier for the farmers to, um, to harvest it. So chlormaquat actually helps the plants to grow straighter so that it's easier for harvest. Well, um, in this particular study uh, on chlormaquat, the damaging effects of it, um, they talked about maternal, and, and so it affects the fetus and then it affects postnatally. And so this had actually shown that after, um, so postnatally what they found was that, uh, and this was a study that was done in rats, there was an increased head length, decreased body fat percentage, hypoglycemia, hyperlipidemia, so like high cholesterol in all your lipids, and hyperproteinemia. Um, in conclusion, maternal exposure to chlormaquat chloride during pregnancy disrupts the embryonic growth, probably through its effects on growth regulators, and even has adverse effects on postnatal health. So it's actually super damaging to the fetus. And the, I'm going to read you a list. These are just some of the damaging effects besides postnatally. But um, so it disrupts fetal growth. It changes how um, the head and the bones develop. So you, you know you're talking like birth defects. It alters metabolism, delaying the development during puberty. So develop, um, puberty delay in uh, young kids. It changes sperm's ability to move efficiently. So sperm motility. So this is infertility in men. And which then I, I would venture to glean that it would probably add to infertility in women as well. It's not saying that. I have no proof, but you have to figure if it's causing um, uh, slow sp uh, sperm motility in men, it's probably doing something damaging to the reproductive organs of women as well. There's decreased test testosterone production, and then it does harm the nervous system. So 
there's a lot of really damaging effects from this chemical that is allowed in our food supply and that has recently been increased in its, uh, in its levels and our acceptable levels in our food supply. And so what EWG did was they went and they tested 14 different products and most of them were all oat-based. In fact, I think they were all oat-based. Yeah, they were. And, uh, and you're gonna be shocked because I guarantee that each and every one of you has one of these products in your home. And now all of these products I would consider to be ultra processed to begin with, which I, I am just firmly a firm believer that this is, you know, this is the type of diet that is making our society sicker. And if you want to get well, you have to pay attention to this and get rid of these ultra processed foods or food like substances as I call them. So they tested, um, Walmart, Great Value, Oats and Honey, Granola, uh, Quaker, Simple, Simply Granola, Oats and Honey. And these are just highly sugar laden. So we're just gonna set aside for a minute. Again, ultra processed, uh, hyper palatable, meaning you know, we, there's a lot of sugar, sugar's very addicting, and, and people love to eat these types of food-like substances. Um, oh, Quaker Oatmeal, Honey Nut Squares, Quaker, so anyway, they're all oat-based. And there was one organic product that they tested, which was Kellogg's Special K Fruit and Yogurt Bar. And, uh, and that tested zero for chlormoquin, chlormoquat, chlormoquat. Um, but you wanna know the product that tested the highest was just Quaker old fashioned oats, just Quaker oats, just oats themselves. And that tested, that was the highest, this bar right here, that tested the highest in chlormoquat. So, so I said, everybody's got oatmeal, everybody has one of these really sh highly sugar-laden cereals, and I really want to encourage you to, first of all, there are far better options for breakfast. You know, go like for a more higher protein breakfast, you're spiking blood sugar right from the get-go, unless you're gonna go out and do a whole lot of really heavy labor uh, and to burn off all this sugar, which I still, it's, I still believe it's too much and it's not quality calories if you do need that kind of energy. Um, but you know, even if you have like regular old fashioned oats that are unsweetened, then you know, you've got this chemical in here. Now, this is one chemical that was tested in these um, food-like substances. So what else is living in there? What other chemicals have been sprayed on these grains to bring these products to your home. So you have to consider that is that the poison is always in the dose. I keep saying that is that, you know, yes, they, they discovered, so, so the amount of chlormoquat in, a, in these products or, or the, uh, it's the EPA allowed amount, I should say, is equivalent to one blade of grass on a football field. And you might be like, okay, big whoop, right? But we are, we are just polluted on a daily basis between toxins that are in our air, everything you eat in your food. This is not just one chemical in your food. There's a multitude of them, like thousands of chemicals that could have been, um, that could be uh, lurking in these foods. So um, I wanna encourage you just to like, let's just clean it up and you know, go for more, you know, these are all like breakfast foods and then the, the bar is a snack food. So, but you know, even though the bar tested zero for chlormoquat, um, you know, who knows, did that, was that, did that come from imported grains? Was it, um, um, you know, I don't even know how much oats are in it when you're coming up with a bar, there's so much sugar in there. So I, I wouldn't even, I'd be like, just don't even eat the bar because there's just way too much sugar and it's just too processed. So anyway, I will drop these into the comments so you can see these studies, but this is actually, it's like the new kid on the block that's been allowed to be in your foods and the EPA is saying yes to it. And, um, and I think that it's, you've got to take matters into your own hands and try not to buy these foods that have these chemicals in them so you can protect yourself and protect your family. All right, I hope that was helpful. As always, please subscribe. I appreciate you being here and we'll see you on the next one.